Okay, so let's do some theory for multi-armed bandits. Okay, so I need to define um, what we, how good we think arm J actually is, okay? So um, X hat for arm J at time T is this average of rewards that we've gotten for, each, for all of the times that we've played arm J. Okay, so this quantity there, that's one if our strategy said we would play arm J at time S. Okay, and then we add up the rewards and then we average them over the number of times arm J was actually played up to time T minus one so that this is a proper average. Now mu j is the expected reward for arm j. Okay, so it would be good if our, if our estimate of the mean of arm j was kind of close to the expected reward for arm j, but we might give up before actually finding out what arm j's actual mean is, depending on our strategy. Okay, so rn raw, this is the raw regret for playing our strategy instead of always playing the best arm, which is called star. Okay, so we look at the we look at the reward we got for arm J, and then we compare it to what we would have got had we known which arm was the best. Now you'd think that we would actually want to keep this raw regret as small as possible, and that's true. But the theory actually doesn't use the raw regret; it actually uses something a regret that's defined slightly differently, which is um, it instead of using the what we actually got when we chose the arm, it uses the mean of that arm. Okay, so it, it uses the difference between mu star and mu j each time we play arm j. Okay, so we want to play arm j um, as little as possible so that uh, we, would, we would rather have played arm star uh, um, as much as possible. Okay, so I'm just going to change the notation slightly where mu star minus mu j is delta j. So that's the regret for playing arm j instead of arm star. Okay, that's the, the difference in the mean rewards of the, these two arms. Okay, so the thing we want to bound in this theory is the expected regret for playing our strategy. Okay, so the expected regret is the expectation over all the randomness in the problem um, of uh, the, and then it's the sum over time, sum over arms, and then the regret for having chosen arm J if we indeed chose arm j. Okay, and then again, the expectation is over all randomness in the problem. So it's, it's over kind of, you know, the randomness in which arm gets chosen by the algorithm. And then for epsilon greedy, for instance, there's um, a random choice of arm and so on. Okay, so I can actually bring the expectation and the sum over time in uh, through that sum over j. And um, it becomes the expectation of the number of times I've pulled arm j up until time n, which is, you know, I'm, I'm bounding the regret until time n. Okay, so we want to bound the expected regret of our strategy, and that's going to involve looking at the amount of times that we actually pull arm j rather than arm star. Okay, so I just want to go back to the formal statement of epsilon greedy and just remind you of something. So I just want to remind you that we chose this parameter of the algorithm k so that it was big so that it's bigger than t both 10 and 4 over the minimum over j of delta j squared. And that's going to come in super handy in the theory, because the bigger k is, the more exploration we do. Remember, because k is a scaling factor on epsilon, which controls exploration. Okay, so the larger k is, the more exploration we do. And that gives us actually a better bound, because the more we explore, the more we actually know what we're doing before we start exploding. Okay, so I want you to just keep, keep those in mind when I show you this theorem. So this is the main regret bound for the epsilon greedy algorithm, and we'll go through it in detail. It's a bit intimidating, but it looks like this. Okay, so we want to bound the expected regret of the epsilon greedy algorithm, and uh, it's bounded by, and then the first term is actually something you can kind of ignore because it's just the regret bound for the starting phase when you just draw all of the arms once. And that's a very, you know, that's a very small number of draws, and so that's not gonna be the major contributor to the regret bound, so let's ignore that term. Okay, now we have a sum over all times after the initial phase, and then we have a sum over all arms that are not arm star. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna sum, and then it's going to be the regret for um, all of those times and for choosing arm J rather than arm star. Okay, so there's regret for choosing arm J. And then we have to look at when we would choose arm J. So we can choose arm J either by exploring or exploiting. If we choose arm J by exploring, well, we explore with probability epsilon t, 
And then if we explore, we choose arm J with probability 1 over M because there are M arms. Okay, so that takes care of the first term. Now the other term, as you probably guessed, is for exploiting. And we do that with probability 1 minus epsilon. And then this beta, that's the, you know, when do we exploit, when do we choose arm J when we exploit? Well, it's when we think arm J is the best when it's actually not. So beta is actually a probability, a bound on the probability that you think arm J is the best when it's actually not. And most of the work in the theorem actually goes into just de de defining what this beta J term actually is. Okay, so great. If you're fine with that, they, there's really one important thing I want you to take away from this bound, which is the fact that it's logarithmic in the number of rounds, which is n. So the regret grows logarithmically with n. Now, how do we know that it grows logarithmically in n? Well, a sum of things that are sort of 1 over t, uh, that, um, you know, because the integral of 1 over 1 over t, that's log, right? So we need all of the terms to be kind of less than 1 over t so that we can get a logarithmic regret. Okay, so let's show you how that actually happens. Well, um, we know that epsilon t is actually order 1 over t because we defined it that way. That was just part of the initial statement of, of epsilon greedy. Okay, great. So that term is fine. It's the beta j term we have to worry about. Beta j has two terms in it. Both of them have to be order 1 over t. We don't need to worry about the 1 minus epsilon because that's a negative sign in front of it. So let's just worry about the, the 1 times beta j t term. Okay, there's two subterms, and they depend on, the first one depends on um, k over here in that power, and guess what? We chose k to be bigger than 10, so that term is good. And now the other term, if we look at the exponent there, well, we already chose k to be bigger than um, 4 over any of the deltas, and so this term also is um, order 1 over t, so that, that term is actually fine as well. And so that's how this bound is logarithmic in the number of rounds. Cool. So I just want to um, point out again this epsilon t here. So the bigger k is, the longer it takes for you to, to, to start exploiting, right? Because if, um, if k is very, very large, then that min will happen at 1 for a very long period of time, and then it'll start decaying, right? So the, the, the bigger k is, um, the more we will explore before we exploit, and the, the longer time it will take us to sort of just plain exploit. Okay. Okay, so let's switch over to UCB, and you'll notice that UCB has no formal parameters. So I'm going to show you the regret bound, and again, there's no parameters in it. Um, but luckily for us, it is still logarithmic in the number of rounds. Um, so how can we see this? Well, the first term is the sum over J of delta J's, so that's just a constant. Um, it doesn't depend on the number of rounds. The second term is clearly logarithmic in the number of rounds. <laughs> Again, it's just sum over the number of arms, so it's logarithmic in n. You can pull that log n out. And the third term, if you, if you look at that third term, well, the third term is a sum over um, terms that it's like t to the negative fourth times like a t squared. And so that's less than order 1 over t, so again, logarithmic in, in the number of rounds. OK, so just some notes. Both algorithms have regret that increases only logarithmically in the number of rounds, which is really impressive um, because that means the regret increases very, very slowly as you run the algorithms, and the proofs are in the notes. Now, you might think, okay, the problem with these theorems is that they involve the delta j's, and you don't actually know the delta j's because you don't know how close the arms are, you know, how, how close the regret of the arms actually are to each other. Um, and that's true, and there is a regret bound that doesn't involve the delta j's in the notes. Okay, uh, both algorithms, both epsilon greedy and UCB are actually about equally good in practice. A lot of people think UCB is a bit more elegant because it doesn't randomly explore. It only looks at arms that could potentially be good, but the truth is that in practice, they're both about equally good. Thanks.